In this video, we will take a look at tasks that allow us to convert files into PDFs. If you're using PDM Professional, you have some more options other than PDFs available to you as well. We will go over how to set up these two tasks as well as how we can implement them into our workflows to automate this process. So first, we'll take a look at the convert task on the left. Taking a look at my admin tool here, we can see that we have the convert task open. The first thing that I want to show is how can we get access to this convert task. So the convert task as well as office to PDF that you can see here in my tasks list are both found in the file explorer under program files, SolidWorks Corp, SolidWorks PDM, and then default data. We can see we have all of these CEX files here. And if I scroll down to the bottom, we can see the convert task as well as the office to PDF task. And these two tasks can be imported into your vault by simply dragging and dropping the CEX file into your admin tool. Once you have those two tasks in, we have to go ahead and configure them. So first we'll take a look at the convert task and we can see all of these options here on the left-hand side that need to be configured. The first is configuring the add-in. So this is gonna allow you to choose which user should we run this task as? You can see I have this set up to run as the admin. You could set this up for whoever you'd like, and you can type in their passwords here for their credentials. Next, we'll take a look at the execution method. So this is gonna determine which computer is actually going to run this task. And if I had supported computers on this list, I'd be able to choose them from there. If you get a message that looks similar to mine here, and I don't see any computers displayed, all you need to do is configure your task host. So in the bottom right hand corner of your task bar, you'll see your system tray where you can open up SOLIDWORKS PDM and choose task host configuration. That will bring up this menu here where I can choose which vault that I want to configure the task host for. And you can see my SOLIDWORKS task add-in right here. All I need to do is give this permission and you'll see that when I give this permission and press refresh list, I can now see my computer's name. So all you need to do is check which computer is actually going to be executing this task. Once you've configured your task host and you've chosen the appropriate computer, we'll move our way down the list here to menu command. This is going to give you the option to choose whether you want a menu command available. So if I right click inside of my local view, will there be an option to choose to convert the files? So currently I do have this set up. If you want this to only go through your workflow, you can turn this off and we'll show how to set this up with your workflow as well. We'll then go over to the conversion settings where you can see you have a couple of different options for your configurations, right? And you also have these check boxes to say, can the user change these settings or are we gonna make sure that these are set in stone? So if I were to check this on, the user would be prompted and be able to choose which option they want. I'm gonna leave this checked off so that it automatically sets the settings that I already have set here. You can see you can do that for sheets and configurations. And here is where you can also choose your output file format. So you can see with PDM Professional, I have all of these different options for neutral file formats. Whereas if you're using PDM standard, you only have the option for PDF files. So I'll leave this as a PDF for now. The next step is your file card. So this is going to allow you to take variables from your source file. So the file that I am converting, and I can say, push the information from the file that I'm converting to this section of my new file. So for example, take the description of a drawing file and make that the title of this new PDF. You can see I also have things like custom comments. So right, PDF automatically generated from workflow will go to the comments section, indicating that any time a file has been converted using this task, we know that it's been accomplished using the convert task rather than maybe somebody converting it themselves. And we can see we can push the revision, the checked by, approved by, really any variable or piece of metadata that's important to you. We'll then see the output file details. This is where I can choose where do I want to save this file to. Again, you have the option to allow the user to change this output. But again, if you want to keep it standard, you cannot allow them to change this. And wherever the default path is set is where it's going to save. So I can see that I have this set up to go to my root vault inside of a PDF folder. And we're going to name the new part, the source file name, 
underscore that source file revision, all right? I also want to mention that in this area, you can choose to save these files outside of your vault as well. So maybe if someone on the shop floor needs to see all of these PDFs and they don't have access to the vault, you can save them to a folder outside of the vault that they do have access to see. Next, we have permissions. So you can say who is allowed to use this task. And lastly, we have success and error notifications. So we can set this up to say, yep, the PDF is generated successfully by this person at this date and this time, and you can notify the user who launched the task, or you can choose to notify maybe the admin. And similarly, we have error notifications. So we can say that the PDF failed to generate, again, by this person, this date, and this time, and again, we chose to notify the user who launched the task. So once your convert task is completely configured, we can then go ahead and implement this into our workflow to automate this process. Once configured properly, adding our task into our workflow is simple. So I can say that I want this task to run right before it gets into the approved state. Once it's approved, that's when it's all finished and that's when I want my PDFs. So I'll say for the transition going into approved, I'll go ahead and open up my transition and go to actions. We can see that I have an action set up right here to execute a task. So when you press add action, I can say type, I can set to execute task. So I can choose which task I want to execute. We can see my convert task is set right here. And I can say convert to PDF. Lastly, I need to choose what am I going to run this for? Am I running it for items, bill of materials, or for files? So we're going to run this for files, and I specifically want to convert my drawings to PDFs. So I can say only run for files with these extensions, and I can say .sldDRW. When you press OK, you can see that this is added to the list. Right? I already have one here, so I'm just going to remove this. But again, remember that these actions execute in order, so I'm going to generate this PDF after everything else occurs. And when I press OK, we can see that it now lives in our past approval actions. So when I move a file from waiting for approval to approved, we can see that it's automatically going to generate a PDF for us. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So now that we've implemented our convert task into our workflow, I can find a drawing in my vault here that is waiting for approval. I can see that in the data card, we don't have things yet like a revision or if I looked at approvals, nobody's checked by or doesn't have a checked date yet until we go ahead and we change the state and I choose past approval. When I choose past approval, it's going to automatically run all of those actions for me. So I'll leave a comment here. And now when I press change state, it's going to run all of those actions, setting all of those variables. And we saw that we set up lastly to execute the task to convert this to a PDF. So I'll press change state, and when I change the state, I can see that it now receives revision A. I can see if I go to approvals, it's been approved on today's date. So let's go ahead and I'll go over to the root of my vault, where we'll be able to see that PDF folder that we chose to save our converted PDFs into. So currently it's opening up SolidWorks, it's saving these drawing files as a PDF, it'll save it into my PDF folder, and once that's finished, we can see by choosing the root of my vault, I now have this PDF folder where it has saved the PDF of my drawing, right? And we chose that to save as the source file name underscore revision. I can see I now have a preview of this PDF here. And if I zoom into the PDF, I can see that it was checked by and I can see the check date. I can see that it's put the revision in here. So it's pushed all of that data from our source file to our output file here. Going back to our admin tool here, we can see that we have our other task, the office to PDF, and this is set up very similarly to the convert task. The biggest difference is the office options here, which you have a couple of different options based on Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, but you would set this up the same way and implement it into your workflow the same way. So in this video, we saw how to add these two tasks into our vault, configure them, implement them into our workflow, and lastly, we saw a resulting PDF. So this has been automating your neutral file creation, and if you like this video, please be sure to check out our YouTube channel.